fellow students and uh, thank you for clicking on the uh, midterm case law brief assignment module. If you are on this page, you will see that at the very top there is a blue link that says click on this link to read the case law brief assignment. We'll get it's to that in hours. a minute, but I want you to also scroll down and pay attention to the close the uh, important dates for this case brief assignment that are listed. For example, um, on May 7th, uh, you should have reviewed the uh, US landmark cases list to see what um, case you want to choose for your case brief assignment. By uh, May 9th, you should have um, a uh, case brief selected. Your name should be typed after the case brief and then you need to start working on the case brief draft. Um, you need to submit uh, an assignment to me by May 13th that says the case brief I chose is. And then you have to submit the assignment to uh, Canvas by May 20th and review your final case brief paper um, before May 27th. Now the paper is due uh, May 28th to turn it in. And so these are very important. I know that uh, this is a compressed course and we uh, hit the ground running, but uh, it's very possible that you do this. Other students have done it and uh, you could do it as well. But again, make sure that you pay specific attention to these dates and uh, don't miss um, those dates so that you don't fall behind. Now, if you scroll down the page, um, and I'm assuming you're still here on the midterm case law brief assignment under modules, um, you will see a highlighted uh, in yellow um, link that says midterm case brief assignment. Now when you're ready to submit the assignment, you will be clicking on this link and then it will take you to turn it in and turn it in, you'll follow the instructions on how to upload your assignment. Uh, if you need help learning how to do this, please contact the online help desk at 209-575. 7900. Now let's keep scrolling down the page. Uh, you'll notice that I put um, for students there is how to submit a Turnitin assignment. You click on that it takes you to a Google Docs document that shows you how to do it. There's also a video on it on uh, Vimeo.com. You click on the link there and you'll see um, a video on how to submit a Turnitin assignment. Now, I mentioned on here um, that it is very important, I can't stress how important it is, that you type your paper in your original words and do not copy any content from the internet or other sources as that is considered plagiarism and it falls under student misconduct. I um, don't expect that any of you will be typing the case law brief at attorney level status. I know that... Um, all of you are working towards your AA degree or possibly working on your four-year degree. So I don't expect you to write your paper as a law student. So I say this because some of you may try to put all these fancy words uh, into the document. And uh, usually that indicates to me that you're either uh, trying to make your paper make sense or you've copied content from the internet, so that usually sends a red flag to me that something is not right. Um, I urge you just to type it as uh, simple as possible, as you would any other English paper, basically stating that um, you know what the case is about and following the IRAC method. Okay, let's scroll down to the bottom uh, where it says notes material, and you'll see where it says 203 case brief sample Microsoft Word. Go ahead and click on that link, and assuming you're connected to the internet, um, you will reach a uh, sample page that shows case law brief Terry versus Ohio, and it has the location. Now, this is very important that you notice that this is the face page of your case brief assignment, and um, it's going to have the title. And so, if you submit a paper to me, and it just says case law brief, but it doesn't have the uh, name of the case as well as the location uh, where it can be found then the whole paper is invalid look at this one here it says terry versus ohio and 392 us 1 1968 so that's where you can go to to locate the case very important that you have this title 
Then if we scroll down on the face page, you will have your name, obviously your first and last name on there. And at the very bottom, you'll notice that I require a specific format on the face page. You need to have the class title, the date, uh, my name, and then Administration of Justice Department. Uh, we're located in the Center for Advanced Technologies uh, at Modesto Junior College. So uh, let's move on to the actual case brief. Now we're on page two where we have the IRAC method. Um, you'll notice that it's a simple question under issue before the court. Uh, it's almost if I had asked you a question, I always say this in my regular classes when I teach this two or three in class, um, is the sky blue? So right here, issue before the court would be, is the sky blue? And then the answer to that would be under rule of law. So, um, you know, here in this case is whether a search for weapons without probable cause for arrest is an unreasonable search under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution. And then the answer is an officer may perform a search for weapons without a warrant, even without probable cause, when the officer reasonably believes that the person may be armed and dangerous. Now, under application of facts, also called analysis, we list the... Um, the uh, summary of the case. Notice how compressed this is. I don't want you to be typing uh, four or five pages. No, the uh, case brief preferably will fit all in one page. So you'll have your face page, then you'll have your main case brief page, and then your last page is references. But let's stay here on application of facts. It's a compressed uh, summary of what happened in the uh, in this case. And if you want to write this down, I always tell students the who, what, where, how, and when um, of uh, what happened. You know, and sometimes you would put the why, but for now we just want the facts. You know, who was involved? When did this happen? Where? How did this happen? You know, and what happened? I mean, basically list on here. So if you look under application of facts here, it shows how these detectives came in contact with the petitioner, John Terry. Now, conclusion by the court, uh, and that's the C in the IREC method. This is where the courts had discussion, um, you know, in order to come to the conclusion listed under rule of law. Now, on case law brief assignments, um, you'll notice that, like, when you tell a story in normal, everyday language, you would uh, follow chronological order, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what happened first, what happened second, what happened third? Well, here in Iraq um, writing, you are actually writing one, four, and then um, three, and then two. And what, what I'm saying is like, so the question is asked, issue before the court, that would be a one, and then uh, application of facts, for example, um, well, we, or conclusion by the court, they discussed, you know, what they were going to do because they reviewed the case, and then they came under the, conclu and the conclusion of this rule of law that would be listed as four. So I want you to be careful, and I always mention this, and it may sound confusing to you, but you need to understand, most lawyers, when they go to criminal courts and they ask their paralegals to pull up a case, they have a very short window of time to present this to the judge as to, uh, you know, push for their position. So if their position is that the sky is mostly blue most of the time, they're going to ask the paralegal, hey, please search uh, any criminal or civil cases showing that the um, sky is blue most of the time. And so the paralegal will then print this out and hand it to him in court or, or her if it's a female attorney. And they have a very short window of time to look at this case brief and then present to the judge uh, the point they're trying to push forward. And so it's very important that when they look at this case brief, they see what is the issue here. You know, a very you know, brief two lines. You notice that it's not longer than two lines. And then rule of law, what's the answer? They're looking for an answer. And then if they have more time, they're going to dive into application of facts or analysis and if the court asks any questions about, you know, what 
topics uh, that they look at in this case uh, when the courts came to their conclusion and the rule of law. And so then the, the attorney will be able to read under here conclusion by the courts. Um, they, you know, felt that it was reasonable to, to search when an officer performs a quick seizure uh, and a limited search for weapons on a person that the officer reasonably believes could be armed. So you notice that um, that's what the court wants to know. The, the, the judge may want to know, hey, when they came to the conclusion in Terry versus Ohio, what areas did they look at to come to this conclusion? And then you'll notice at the very bottom of, of uh, conclusion by the court under that heading, there's a dissent. And dissent is a judge that voted against the majority of judges in this case. And so in, in the Terry versus Ohio uh, case brief that you're re looking at right now, hopefully, Justice William Douglas uh, dissented, reasoning that the majority's holding would grant powers to officers to authorize a search and seizure that even a magistrate would not possess. Now, again, uh, not every case is going to have this, but if it does have it, you need to mention it in the conclusion by the court area under dissent. You notice that I left a blank space, and then you have that. So now let's scroll down to the bottom uh, last page, and that is references. Um, you notice that it's formatted. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's shown as APA writing style. Uh, I know that some of you uh, that are used to writing APA papers will, will say, well, uh, in APA papers, um, you're supposed to put a website that you find in an end text. So that means throughout the, the paper, which would be, which would mean that the, the location for the internet, uh, uh, you know, area where you found this information would have to be listed in the case brief. Well, for me, uh, my request is that you do not include that. I, I request that you put that area in references um, and not an in-text citation. And if you have any questions on this, feel free to email me. But um, anyway, so pay attention to the references area. Notice the first uh, line is justified all the way left. And then the following lines on the source are indented right, approximately seven spaces. And then we have a, a larger blank space. And this is all double spaced. So anyway, I hope this, uh, this helped. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, to the uh, midterm page now. It's located under modules. Click on midterm page, and we're back on the uh, midterm page case law brief assignment. And then we're going to keep going forward or down because after the uh, case brief sample that I just described to you, um, there is a learning several learning videos. And this is where you need to watch these two videos to fully understand um, what is expected in an IRAC um, or how to brief uh, a... Uh, landmark case in Iraq method. Um, again, uh, this is, I know it's a lot of information and some of you get overwhelmed. Um, I ask that you take a deep breath. Um, if you start early, you'll have plenty of time to complete this assignment and submit it. Um, it's never a good idea to wait until the end um, as computer glitches sometimes occur and you will feel a bit of stress trying to untangle those. Um, Okay, so I'm going to close this audio. I hope this was helpful. Do reach out to me via email or text if you're having difficulties with these and if you need any clarifications. All right, thank you for listening. We'll talk to you soon.